Hi, my name is Chris Ryan. We're out on the PJ National Golf Course this morning. We're talking about how you can create a little bit more speed in your golfing. And we're talking about how you can do that via how you move the grip end of the golf club or how you move your hands. And we're gonna go through a little analogy and a concept which I think is definitely gonna make you think a little bit differently about how you apply speed to the golf club. Now, this is something we would like to do with a lot of golfers because very simply, if you can hit the ball a little bit further, the game is generally going to be a little bit easier. I appreciate that it's gonna be a little bit more erratic if you do drain at more speed, but for the most part, if we can get golfers to advance the ball further from the tee or hit shorter irons into the green, we're definitely going to be at an advantage. So, to hit the ball further, we need some speed in the club head. And for many golfers, how they do this or how they think this should be done is maybe not quite right. And so, as I say, this video is really gonna be based around, uh, you know, more of a concept, more of a, an idea on how you can think about this. And I think it's gonna, as I say, make you think slightly differently. Now this, the first person I saw talk about this drill or this concept was Chuck Cook. Now, apologies if this has come from somebody else and he just took it from there, but I heard it from Chuck Cook doing a conference in America. Um, and, and I understood the idea of what happened, but the way he explained it and his analogy was fantastic. And so we're gonna go through that today. So, here's what he said. We are going to imagine that as you're on your downswing, we're talking about this part of the golf club here, so the grip end of the golf club, the end of the golf club. And I want you to imagine that you are in a speedboat. Now, I'm sure this is, uh, this is something that we all do on a day-to-day -day basis, um, but just imagine for a moment you are in a speedboat and you're driving on a lake or the sea in that speedboat and behind you on a bit of rope is one of your friends, family members, wherever you want to be, in one of those kind of rubber dinghies. And as you're driving that speedboat, they're being pulled along. And effectively, as you start your downswing, this is you in your speedboat, here is the string, and that is the dinghy at the end, okay? Bear with me. You agree with me so far? Hopefully, good. So, you're driving that speedboat. How do you try and throw the people that are in that dinghy out of the dinghy? Because you're driving along at the moment, they're going a certain speed, which is the same speed as you. What would you do? Well, what you would probably do is you would sharply turn the steering wheel. You would turn that speedboat at a severe angle because what you would realize is that if you did that, that would propel the dinghy with a lot more speed out with more speed, okay? And that is going to definitely give them the chance of falling out, and that's the idea. And that is very similar to the golf sink. So what we have to imagine is as we're approaching this golf ball, the grip is moving towards the golf ball, the dinghy is just following. But as we approach the golf ball, the movement of the grip, we have to change that. And we have to what we call bend the hand path. And what that really means is change the direction that the grip is moving. And so it suddenly or quite sharply starts to bend around and up. And that bending of the hand path or the movement of the grip end of the golf club is what is going to propel that golf club out to the golf ball. And it's definitely a fantastic way to generate a lot of speed. And it's not speed through you trying to release the club with these angles. You're not trying to throw the club head away with as much speed as you can. You're very simply moving the grip in such a fashion that the movement of it causes the club head to move outward at speed into the golf ball. Now the key thing or the key word there was outward because as I do that, and I start to move my hands, they're going to move, or the grip of the club is going to move slightly up and slightly in. And that will send the club head down and it will send it out. Now, if it's going to send it outward, it had better be at some point inward. So if you're the kind of golfer who gets the golf club into this position, where you can see it's already in line with the golf ball, it's gonna be very difficult for you to do that because from here, we don't really want the club to go outward because it's already outward. So we really need to feel like as we approach this last parallel position, we have the golf club in line with the hands, if not slightly behind the hands. From here, as I start to move my hands on that up and inward path and the club starts to go outward, it can go outward into the golf ball. And that's really what we're trying to do. So here's a great way for you to feel exactly what those hands should do. Take your starting position. I've got a mid iron here, that would be perfect. You're gonna go up and you're gonna find a delivery position here where you've got the golf club about level the ground and the club head about in line with your hands. And you're just going to very simply split the grip. So I've got my lead hand at the end of the handle, my right hand is now onto the metal. And as I start to move that golf club down towards the ball, watch what happens to my lead hand. My lead hand, my glove hand, is going to have to move upwards and inwards. And that is exactly what we're trying to do in the goal sink. So obviously I'm not turning my body, so you'll see my lead arm is starting to break down, but my left hand is definitely moving upwards and inwards. And as I do that in my full goal sink, that's exactly what I should be doing with that lead hand. It should be moving slightly inwards 
slightly upwards and you can see that that is happening there. Now this is a fantastic way, as I said, to drain its speed. So this really kind of goes against what a lot of golfers are doing. A lot of golfers are trying to hit a draw shot. They're trying to hit a right to left shot. They understand that the club path, so that's the direction the club is traveling, needs to be somewhere to the right of the target. But what they're doing is they're actually trying to swing the hands out to the right. They're trying to swing out to the right. Now, whilst that isn't the best way to generate speed, it's really going to start to compromise your strike. Uh, it's definitely going to compromise your ability to square the club face. It's going to give you probably more issues than you've already got. So we don't really want the hands to be traveling out towards the right rough because whilst that would seem like it's the right idea, as we've discussed, it's not the best way to put speed in the golf club. So let's just go through that once more. I'm going to find my last parallel position, split the grip, and I'm going to feel like as the club head goes down towards the ball, my left hand moves up and in. That's a great way for me to feel what my hand path should be like. Now, when you split the grip, you probably get a hand path which is potentially a little bit more extreme than we'd actually see, okay? Some golfers, we don't see the hands moving that much up and in, others we see it a lot, lot more. Okay, so as I say, today's video, a little bit more about a concept rather than a, uh, a technical drill, but you can definitely do some of those little drills that we just did, and it's a great way to feel like the hands are moving up and in. Ultimately, what we can do is we can start to make that in our golf swing. We find get to last parallel, and then don't be afraid to let the grip of the club move up and in towards you. Okay, and I'll be very happy with that one, actually. Hit that really, really nicely down the middle of the foe. It's only six sides, so it's not going to be the longest tee shot on this, uh, this 13th hole, but that was pretty good. So hand path and how we use that is so, so key to generate some speed in the golf club. Rather than thinking about applying speed into the club head, think a little bit more about how you're using this part of the golf club and moving that in the right fashion can definitely add some speed to the golf club. Adding speed to the golf club, it's going to add yards to the shot and that is definitely going to lower your scores. Thank you for watching. Hope that helps. Thank you to Chuck Cook for giving me that drill. Uh, really useful. I use that in a lot of lessons. I think it really helps the golfers understand a little bit about what should happen through impact. All the usual stuff is down below. There's a comments box down there. There's a like button and there's also a link to subscribe. If you're not a subscriber, it's absolutely free and it just means you'll get a notification each time I upload a video and it means you won't miss any of the content. So thank you again for watching and hopefully we'll see you back here again soon.